I'm going to show you a really quick guide on how I designed this um, pattern, this kept pattern with all of its colors in Google Sheets using conditional formatting. I'm going to try and keep it really short and sweet because no one wants to sit through half an hour of me talking. <laughs> so um, Google Sheets is a free uh, thing that anyone can use. You just type sheets.google.com into the top of your bar and you just need to log into your Google account and then it'll open up a Google Sheets spreadsheet. You can use any spreadsheet, but Google Sheets is free for everyone and it's cloud based, which means you can access it on any device that you need to look at it on. Um, first thing I'm going to do is rename it. I'm just going to call it knitting pattern. And then we need to resize these boxes so that they look a bit more like a chart. So you click on number one, scroll down. I'm going to scroll down to 100 because it's a nice round number. Press shift on your keyboard and then click on it and it will select all of those rows. Then if you right click and go to resize rows, change it to 12. And that will shorten them all down a bit. You scroll back up to the top, click on A, scroll along to Z. Again, you just press shift on your keyboard and then click and it will highlight all of them. So right click resize columns and then put in 12. And then you've got a nice square chart there. So obviously we need more. So I'm just going to, while they're all still highlighted, you just right click on them and you go insert 26 left or right or whatever, just insert another few of them so that you've got a kind of nice big band there that you can work on. My original kept this one, it's done to scale. So it's exactly how many stitches I would need for my, my cap. Um, but this one this is just an example. I'm just going to do a random number. So the first thing I like to do is select a few rows that I'm going to do my design in and change the background color. So you just go up here to fill color and then I'm going to choose a gray. And then to add your conditional formatting rules, basically what we want to do is when you type a letter into a box, you want it to fill that box with a color. So we're going to go to format and then conditional formatting. So it's applied to the range that we've selected. We want to format the cell if the text is exactly the letter X. And then we're going to change the fill color of the box. So if you click on that, and I'm just going to choose this blue. If you have a custom, if you've got wool that you want to match the color of, you can click on the custom button here, and you can just scroll about there, choose whichever color you like. Just press OK, and it'll fill it with the custom color. Um, I'm just going to choose this blue for now. I'm also going to change the text color to the same blue just so that the box is that pure blue color. However, if you do end up changing colors, you have to remember to change both of them. And then click done. And I'm going to add another color. I'm just going to add black. So format the cells if the text is exactly, and I'm going to choose a different letter. And I'm going to choose C because it's right next to X on the keyboard, which means we can fill in the chart really quickly. And I'm going to fill that with black. I'm going to fill that with black. Cool. So now that you've applied that rule to all of these bands, you can just select anywhere on there and you can just start filling the boxes. So you just tap X and then if you press left, right, up or down on your uh, keyboard, you can then just scroll through the boxes really easily. So I filled that box with blue. If I press C, it's going to fill it with black. If you want to get rid of the color, you just press backspace to delete the letter and it'll change the color back. Or if say I wanted to change that X to uh, uh, black, just highlight it, press C, oops, I did it on one under, press C, and it'll change it. Too breezy. So I'm just going to do a little box. I'm just doing something quite random just to show you kind of what you can do with it. Oops, I'm going too fast here. I'm going to take out those corners just to make it a little bit nicer. So I'm just clicking on them and clicking backspace. And then I think I'll put some blue here and maybe a bit of black here. I don't like that. And then blue, black. And, oops. Let's get rid of them. So I'm just scrolling around using my keypad forgotten which letters are which color but at least there's only two of them and I'm going to add another bit on here just so that it repeats nicely Oops. 
Okay, so once you've got your repeat, say you were using the pattern and it said it had a five stitch repeat, you just put in your five stitches, just type that in. And I'm actually going to get rid of this because this first row is going to form the same link on the chain. So you then select the top right corner, wherever your repeat is, and go to the end of the repeat, select all of those boxes, and you'll see a little blue box comes down at the bottom. And when you scroll your mouse over, it turns into a crosshair. If you click on that, and then drag it all the way to the end of your spreadsheet, and then let go, it's going to repeat that pattern the whole way along. And then you don't need to fanny around doing any weird copy and pasting or anything. Just click and drag, super easy. Um, if I decide that I want to change that blue color, you can just click anywhere in that band that you've just filled. Just click on the conditional formatting rules. Change it, let's say yellow. Ooh. And I think the black's maybe a bit too much for contrast, so I'm going to change that to a dark blue. And if you want to change the background at all, just select those rows. Always use these ones because then it selects the entire way along. Because it's the background color that I want to change, it's none of the uh, it's none of the conditional formatting rules, so I can just change the fill color here. And I'm going to change that to white. Oh. Yeah. So that looks quite cool. I would like to add a band above it, so I'm going to select that whole row, right click, and do insert one above, and I'm going to fill that with a color that I think will be a nice contrast, kind of orangey color. Click there. Do the same again, orangey color. So we've got a bit of a, a pattern coming along. If you wanted to put something a bit bigger in, just select the rows again, fill that, and then add your new rules. Because we've selected a whole new area, it, we can use the same letters again. It's a completely new set of rules. So add another rule, format the cell. If the text is exactly X, I'm gonna make that turn into red. Done. I'm going to add another rule. If the text is exactly C, I'm going to make it uh, into that blue that we chose, which I think was this one. And then you can just start drafting away. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but we'll come up with something. I'm just making this up. Oh my god, it's starting to look like Pac-Man. Oops. Yeah, I don't want that to look like Pac-Man really, so I'm just going to mirror that. Try and get it as close as possible. That's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I went down like that. Oops. I've had a mad idea. Oh, that is quite cute. <laughs> so you can just fiddle around. You see how easy it is to draft a pattern when you're doing it like this. I think I've made these a little uneven, but I'm just going to go with it for now because we're just doing a super quick tutorial. Yeah, why not? Something mm, not quite right here. So I'm just going to hit backspace on them.
there. It doesn't look like Pac-Man anymore, as much anyway. So once you've got your Wii design, you can then select that again. I'm going to leave a gap in between these ones and just click and drag that across. And if you let go too soon and it, it doesn't look like quite right, you just delete that section by selecting it and pressing backspace and then you can select your original repeat again and then click drag. Here we go. So I'm going to change the background on this one a little bit. So I'm just going to select about that much and I'm going to change that to a kind of paler yellow. Too pale. Too pale. And then I'm going to add a band right in the middle there. Just of white because I like doing that. I think this top bit here benefit from the blue being maybe a different colour. So because if you click anywhere here, even if you select those rows, see if I select those and then I change my formatting rule and I hope that it's just going to do it for those ones, it's actually going to do it for the whole area. So what we can do is create a new rule. So instead of X or C, we're going to say, so if the text is B, we're going to change it to uh, back. But obviously all of this blue is the letter C. So we need to change all of those C's to V's. So all you need to do is go to edit, find and replace. And you want to find all of the C's in that selection and you want to replace it with V. And it's the specific range. And then you just click replace all. And you see it will change those from C to V. I'm going to do the same down here. File, oh no, edit, find and replace. Find C, replace it with B, replace all. Oh dear. It's because my rule isn't in place yet. So I'm going to change that to B, and it's going to be. It's going to be back. There we go. So I hope that is a little bit helpful. It's really just a very, very quick crash course. If you have a pattern, then you can obviously follow it. Just go one, two, three, and then there's an X, and then one, two, three, and there's an X, and just continue along. This is exactly how I planned this whole cap out. I just did my little repeat here, and then I clicked and dragged it all the way along. You can see all of my conditional formatting rules are all um, in the spreadsheet. Obviously, they're not showing up, but it's also because you're using the keypad number pad, the up, down, left and right keys on your keyboard. It's very quick and easy to kind of scroll about and just do a design quite quickly, which is how I came up with all of the cows. I was just looking at photos of them and just kind of blocked them out, just kind of had a look at them and see what they were going to do. Obviously, these are all B and W for black and white. And I changed the background color about a million times. These are all colors of uh, wool that I have in my stash. So I wanted to visualize how the cap would balance out in the long term, like how this green is repeated here and how the colors that I've used here and here are mirrored and how hopefully once it's all knitted, it's all going to balance out quite nicely. But I must have changed it about 7,000 times. What you can also do if you've come up with a kind of design and you kind of like the colors, but you're not too sure about it, but you don't want to lose this in case you want to come back to it. You can just click on file and then make a copy. You just call it a copy of knitting pattern, or you can call it whatever you like. Click OK. And Google Sheets will make a, a direct copy of it. So you can then go along, change anything you like. So you can change the background color. Let's go for a green. And I'm going to change, so you just go format, conditional formatting, it saves all of your rules. So for this area, I'm going to change the love heart into yellow, mm, maybe a blue, you can maybe tell that yellow and blue are my go-to. I'm going to change the blue to red or darker green maybe then you can just play around just see whatever you think kind of works do you know what we could do change this whole background change that to black 
that gives quite a cool a cool contrast while you're still using the two same colours from above and below. Same with this bit. If I wanted to change that background, select that. I've got it all the way. Select all of that. Change that to black. Mm, looks quite cool. Maybe want a lighter colour in there though. So I'm going to change the yellow to the same to the blue and I'm going to change that dark blue to the black. Oh no, because my background's black. Well, let's try yellow. I think that's a bit too much. So we'll maybe go for the green. Anyway, you see how really easy it is to change things. If you want to just change this section, you can just use that same system. So instead of V, um, instead of V, or X even, because it's X. You want to add a new rule if the text is exactly, uh, let's go B this time. I want it to be yellow. And then you just go edit, find and replace. I want to find X and I want to replace it with B. Replace all. Um, except that's not, I think it was C, was it? Oops. If you make a mistake, you just press Control and Z, <laughs> or you go to Edit and Undo. I actually quite like that minty green color. You can see I've got a rule here where it says if the cell is not empty, which isn't if the text is exactly one of these, but if it has something in it, but it isn't what it should be. Obviously these two rules, because if the text is B and the cell is not empty, they're kind of contradicting each other. So I'm just going to delete that and it should let my B rule rule supreme. Not so sure about that yellow, so I'm going to change it back to the minty green because I quite like that. If you want to add a row above just to create a band, you just click on it, insert one above, and then you can fill that with whatever color you like. So it's super fast, bit of a messy tutorial, but it kind of shows you how you can very quickly come up with a lot of very different designs. And that's how I did this entire thing. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, let me know. And happy capping! <laughs>